as you guys can see we're gathering some spruce roots today that's what we're going to use for basically all the lashings um, on the canoe that's what I used to for uh, spruce bark baskets or birch bark baskets I'm looking for root about pinky size and uh, we're gonna have to boil them take the bark off and then split them to get the good the good cordage or lashing material got a nice piece here so you can't you can't just pull them out you got to kind of dig them out because if you just pull on them they'll just snap so you got to slowly move the moss and pull on it and then I'm only gathering the uh, the roots that are at the surface of the earth so it's not really hurting the tree in any way it's just like if I'd be cutting off a few branches on a big tree it's not enough to kill it I'm gonna grab my uh, digging stick And as I pull on it, I feel like I'm blocking somewhere. So I just got to dig it out and there's probably a fork or something like that. It's a lot of work because you need lots of roots. Okay, so here it was splitting, so I snapped it off, and uh, that's what I got for, for total length. I'm gonna cut it, cut it off back here. Once I have my my long piece, I roll it up and I put it in the bowl for boiling. C'est creux, là, c'est comme splitté en deux, puis ça c'est encore une dimension intéressante. Il dit on a les racines puis le bois qu'il faut pour les faire bouillir. Okay, so I'm back in the garage. Once I have uh, the roots boiled, I just put them in a bucket of water, get the bark off, leave them in a bucket of water, and you end up with something that looks like this. Now I'm just gonna use the knife to get rid of all the, get rid of all the small little, let me see here if I can 
focus. There you go, get rid of all these little uh, branches or offshoots. And then after that, I'll split it. Scissors work pretty good too to get rid of all these offshoots. Very time consuming job. Okay, once you're done, you end up with two roots that look something like that. So I split it and then I removed the layer as well on the inside. And uh, looks like that. Nice, nice length. You can use that for lashings. And I like to just roll them like that tie them off for later. I finished um, pegging the uh, out whales, outside gun whales, and I've started doing uh, root lashings. So I've got four done already and uh, so they take you through at least one lashing to show you the process and how it's done. So I had measured in advance every, um, so I have like six inches space and then I have a two inch wide lashing and six inch space, two inch wide lashing for a birch bark canoe, the Algonquin style is like two two inches space and then two inch roots. There's a bunch of different styles. But uh, anyways, so for the lashing, I got my spruce roots that are already been boiled and stripped down. Um, and then I readjust them. I peel some of them off if they're too wide or if they're too, uh, too bulky. So I gotta make sure before it starts sewing that uh, they're all pretty nice and when they have like big uh, big roots or big big pieces on them like big knots then they won't go through the hole and it doesn't make as nice of a, a lashing too at the end so I'm just gonna Just gonna grab some water, so I leave them always in the water, and then before you start start sewing, you want to make sure they're well well wet. So this is about the length that you need, arm length to arm length. For me, that's about five feet long, 
Yeah, so you can't have shorter pieces, but the thing with the shorter pieces is that, that it'll be annoying to have to start over and then uh, because you have to you have to get it lashed down, but when you have a nice long piece, you can all do the whole lashing with the one root. Okay, so I got two pointy ends. So that's where my two pegs are, each side off, and then starting here, this is my all that I built from a uh, old file. Works great. Make my hole. Start a little bit on the side of the a little bit on the side of the peg just to make sure that it hides it once I'm done. And I go in about this long. Yeah, so about leave about this long out, come back around, and then go back in the same hole that I came in. Now my end's too, too bulky, it won't go through the hole, so I'm going to shave it down a little bit. And I'm going to make my hole a little bit bigger as well. Give it a chance to go through. I use these little blue pliers to help me. Help me grab the other end of the root on the other side. Quite the process. Every lashing takes me about 10-15 minutes and I have, that's if it goes well, and I have 40 to do on this boat because I'm going to have about 20 ribs and I know that it's 40 because each rib will go in between the lashings and uh, I need to do a lashing on each side, so that's 20 lashings on each side. And then the trick to it is you want these really tight, really taut. So once you pull on it on each side like that, you want to put your thumb and hold it in place so you don't lose your tension. Go around. Pass it through the hole like that. Pull on it. So I did a my second hole. Pull it nice and tight, and then the other end that's there is tugged underneath, so I'm passing over it. Go around, go twice in the same hole. Because if I do a new hole each time, it'll weaken my bark, I'll have too many holes. I'll have too many holes and then that'll make the bark weaker. And I don't want all my holes to be to be uh, to be took too too close together either. Straighten the root out before I pull on it so that it when it's tight set it goes goes well. And with the friction the friction of the uh, the root going through the hole, you want to make sure that you keep it nice and wet. Really, I wouldn't 
let it go so that it doesn't loosen up but just to film just to show you guys the other end is tucked underneath and then my hole's there Hope you guys are enjoying these these videos so far it's a blast building this canoe I'm thinking on maybe building another one next summer maybe a birch bark see how how these videos do and if people like it and what I get for feedback build a birch bark one it's a little bit of a different model and a different style to build a birch bark than it is a spruce bark but I just wanted to at least start with this see how it goes and then go from there it's quite the learning learning curve too and the experience but uh, it's nice to be set up in the garage now set up for these types of birch bark projects slash bushcraft projects. I want to build uh, more baskets too. I built a few that I showed on the channel but there's tons of tons of different models and different sizes you can do. In winter I as you guys know I like to do winter camp outs and in the summer too but I like to do projects like this in the summer a lot of people out in the woods camping too in the summer I like the, the quietness of the winter and the challenge too cold Less bugs too. Okay. I'm nearing nearing the end. Usually I can go a little bit faster, but I I'm speaking and filming and Change the camera angle just for the end to show you. And then once you're done, all you do is you go through underneath like that, through all the other lashings, grab it from the other side. Want to add a little bit of water there just to make sure it doesn't snap on me and then you pull on it and that's not going to go anywhere and then you just cut off the excess there it's nicely nicely tucked in underneath see what I got for a final length so I'm aiming for Two inches and I got about, yeah, two inches, one eighth. That's 
Beautiful. So I'll go ahead, cut that off. And then there you go. Total of one, two, three, four holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight passes. Eight uh, lashings, so four holes, eight lashings. This crooked knife, beautiful crooked knife. A uh, man from Quebec built it for me. Custom built. Love the snare wire handle. Love this thing. This is probably the most boring part of the canoe construction. Maybe not the most boring, but the longest because 40 lashings times 5 feet, that makes 200 feet of root that I'm using. That's quite a bit of root to be tying. If I say 50 minutes times 40, let me see, I've got to get my calculator out, and I'm doing this all by myself, so I'll say 50 minutes times, i got 40 roots, that's 600 minutes divided by 60, so that's 10 hours of work, just lashing it. Usually takes more than 15 minutes because 15 minutes is like I'm ready to go when I start tying, but sometimes you gotta re-split the root. And then sometimes they snap off or break and then you have to start over. But then once the lashings are all done, I'll be able to do the, uh, the front parts. I want to give a special thanks to my buddy JP, Chef Philippe, for uh, lending me about 10 of these uh, saint joint what it was called in English, saint joint I got to buy myself some, but he was really nice to, to lend them to me for a good 3-4 months while I build this thing. Do a video too on uh, the tools that I use. So go check out the video for the tools. I'll show all the different knives, axes, hammers, things like that that I use for the spruce bark canoe construction. Let's see if 
this root right here is just about the perfect size. It's about a pinky size. Um, pinky size when you gather it with uh, the uh, about pinky size when you gather it with with the bark, and then once you boil it, peel the bark off. You end up about with this size, which is about like pencil size or even uh, sharpie, sharpie size like a permanent marker, but not like a big permanent marker, like a smaller permanent marker. For a birch bark basket, you can have a lot smaller than that though, it doesn't need to be as uh, strong. kind of an issue here with the root, it's kind of weak, so I don't want to go over one more, but I have my two inch lashing that I'm looking for, so tuck it underneath like that, cut the excess off, golden. 15 done, so only 25 left to go. And you really got to be careful not to cut yourself with these when you're working with these roots because it's so such a small small piece of wood and you're doing pretty fine fine work and knives have to be super sharp cut myself pretty good on the fingers a few times okay now I dip it in water just to have it Nice and wet, and then you're ready to go. This uh, this knife is don't really like it. It doesn't hold on to the blade very good. So when you're cutting, sometimes the blade wants to slip out. See like that? Super dangerous. Let me go grab another knife actually. Hey guys, how's it going? So uh, since we last spoke, I have uh, finished up pegging all the wooden pegs inside the in whales and the out whales, and uh, I've done three quarters of the lashings. So this side's done, that side's done, this side's almost all done. So the uh, everything's holding up really good. So I can take out my my uh, my template. So that's what you're going to see at the bottom. I'm kind of going to explain what uh, these rocks and what the template does as I'm taking it off. So under the rock here, I just have a frame to hold the rock up, but the rock holds on this thwart and the thwart is just the uh, cross piece goes from one side of the gunwales to the other side of the canoe, both sides of the canoe. This is a thwart right here. The center thwart is right over here underneath this big rock. So what you have underneath is the thwarts. Now the key to this is that the center thwart is lower because I want my canoe to be lower in the middle than the front to have that nice canoe shape. So these have two by fours that hold it up 
and they're not the same length, so these ones in the middle are shorter than the ones in the fort here. So depending on how high you want the ends of your canoe to be compared to the center, you can vary the height of these, but they should be the same, this fort, this fort versus the center. Actually, I'll show the books that I use and all the info from uh, the canoe that I'm building is into that, those books from uh, Edwin Tappanatney, great books. Yeah, so I got 12 inches here and then 8 inches there and then I've got a 15 inch small plank. Don't know if you can see that. There you go, focusing in there. But it's 15 inches from the bottom here to my top. I got here I have three inches and a half about right here. And then it's the same thing, of course, on the other side. So the same distance here and then the 15 inches into the center there. Now the template that's at the bottom that I'm just going to take out right now is a little bit smaller. As you can see, it's got a few inches less than my actual in whale there. And then the same thing on that side. So being that it is smaller, I shouldn't have any issues taking it out. Like I said earlier, having my in whales and out whales all firm, the bark should not move at all from its position by taking these blocks out. Locks out, like you can see. Okay, just gotta take the final piece out. Careful not to break anything. Woohoo! Ha ha ha! Bam! That's what the template looks like. There's nothing on the ends because I had to bring the uh, bark up with those straps. So the ends are flush cut. Well, cheers guys. This was a big step for us, for me, for us in the uh, building construction of this canoe to take the template out. We got it out safely. Nothing broke and everything's staying in place so that's worth a good beer got a stanley park brewing 1897 amber ale that's good right i just gotta keep uh keep crushing it got one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I got about ten lashings still to do. Maybe twelve with a couple on that side. And then uh, I'll close up the ends. Do some lashings there. That'll be awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. That'll be uh, the end of it for this one. And uh, if you guys want to support the channel, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, share my videos, like, comment, subscribe, and if you really, really like the videos, then go watch more of my videos. 
and uh, I'll see you guys next week for uh, the continuation of the build. Cheers guys, rock and roll.